Do you know the secret for making great apple cider? Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen, and fall is in the air, which means that it's time to make apple cider. And if you have never tasted real apple cider, you are missing out on life because this is great. So we have a local farmer's um, market that we go to and we can purchase um, this wonderful apple, apple cider, which is actually delicious. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. But it is nothing compared to what you can make at home. And today our friend Suzanne and her family made apple cider using an apple press and she has agreed to share with us that experience. Now, when we talk about storing apple cider, um, Suzanne actually um, puts it in clean jugs, the new, per, newly purchased half gallon jugs, and she puts it in the freezer. And then you can store it for quite a while. But this isn't gonna stay good. It's not shelf stable, right? It's not gonna stay good long term. So you can actually pour it into the jars and you can water bath can it and then it's shell stable and it will last for several years but quite frankly once you do this it doesn't really taste not, like not this anymore so there's a balance with everything so sit back and relax and let's watch suzanne and her family do all the work we had the good fortune a week or so ago to finish up our harvest by making some apple cider we've made juice in the past by just using a juicer but this year we were able to get an apple press and do it that way. We found that the best way to get good flavor for our juice is by using multiple kinds of apples. We started our morning out by picking all the apples that we had off our trees. We have four different varieties. We had a family member who gave us a few boxes of a different variety that gave us five. So that it gave us really good dimension to our juice. We also collected all the materials, the equipment that we would need to be able to do the pressing for the day. We had the press itself, we had a wheelbarrow full of clean water that we could use to clean the apples. We had the chopper grinder and we had some inexpensive tubs that we just got from the dollar store. We found that in doing some research, the chopper grinder was the key to be able to get the most cider out of the apples as we pressed them. We don't spray our apple trees, so as a result, we share some of our apples with birds and bugs that think that they're delicious as well. So we decided that after we washed the apples that we were gonna cut them all the bad parts out so that only the good things went in to the chopper. The chopper cuts it up so finely that it gives a lot of surface area for the juice to come out. We found that if we put four heaping wash tubs full of apples in the chopper, that was just the perfect amount to be able to fill the press. The cider press that we use is new to us, but it's really rather old. And for the last several years, it's been stored in a shed that's been hot. So as a result, the bottom of the press has come away from the walls a little bit. So we had to be a little ingenuitive and come up with a way that we could keep the juice from just falling through those cracks. We fashioned an aluminum roasting pan to fit in there just perfectly so that it would catch all the juice and be able to deliver it to the clean wash basin that we had to be able to catch the apple juice. The press is lined with a mesh bag that allows the apple juice to come out but keeps the solids inside. We put the four tubs of the apple mash inside and then we fold over the tops of the bag. And lower the juice press down. We screw the assembly so that it starts to press, and we press it until there's quite a bit of resistance. We call that the first press. As the mash compacts, the press can continue to be tightened down until no more cider comes out. When that happens, we take the bag, we release the pressure, take the bag, turn it over, mess the mash up just a little bit, reassemble, crank it back down, and press the mash even more. That we call the second press and that gets us a little bit more cider. 
when the tub catching the fresh juice or the cider gets full, we dip it out with a clean measuring cup and we fill some new half gallon jugs, um, kind of like milk jugs, but we've got them at an industrial supply uh, company that's close to us. We fill them up all the way to the top if we're gonna drink it fresh or we're gonna give it away soon. If we're gonna freeze it, which we do with most of it, we leave a, a couple inches headspace so that as it freezes and expands, it doesn't break either the jug or the lid. We were done with each batch. The mash went into a bucket so that we could use it to feed the neighbor's chickens and their pigs. We thought that was good use of the spent resource. We were able to um, pick what we think were about eight to 10 bushels of apples and we got 17 gallons of apple cider. Most of it went in the freezer, but we couldn't resist sampling some and sharing some with neighbors. Man, was it ever good. We call it liquid fall in a, in a bottle. So there you have it. What a wonderful way to have just amazing apple cider. And I'm especially fond of the way that they cut all the bugs out, because yeah. that's what I do when I preserve things, but somehow I think they weren't all cut out of this. I think we're drinking some protein apple cider, which it still tastes yeah. good. Yeah, meets the need, so. <laughs> Anyway, so this is just one way that you can preserve your apple harvest. Assuming you have an apple harvest or you find an apple harvest, um, and we would encourage you to plant a few trees so that you can have an apple harvest. So this is one way to get the job done. There are several others. So for our question of the day, how do you like to preserve your apples? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution. <laughs>